Welcome back, Turners, to another warm, sunny California day in my shop. Uh, today's video is going to be on the short side. I'm not going to produce any turnings today. I have a project I recently pulled together. Uh, it's wood turning related. It's a vacuum chamber that I pulled together from a couple of affordable pieces of equipment. Uh, and I'm going to go over that with you. It's not a build video, um, it, but it's kind of going to be an explanatory thing. Um, you're going to see the vacuum chamber used in some upcoming videos. So um, I was inspired by some of our uh, more prominent wood turners out there who have either purchased or built some of their own. And uh, so I thought I'd give it a shot. So uh, let me show you what uh, I've got here on the bench. Well, turners, here's my setup. Um, you can probably recognize the Harbor Freight vacuum pump. I think this can be had for uh, somewhere between uh, 80 and $100 on sale and with coupons. Um, I believe it's the 2.5 CFM version. And um, this, well, this is my vacuum chamber. Um, it's comprised of, believe it or not, this is an asparagus pot. I'll show you that in a moment. This is a three quarter inch thick piece of Lexan, I believe, and uh, the, the components up here are a uh, vacuum pressure gauge and some connection fittings and relief valve and stuff like that. So uh, let me show you. You can see right now, I don't know if you recognize, I have this under pressure. Um, I've been running a pressure test on it just to see how well of a vacuum it'll hold, and uh, I am very pleasantly surprised at what a good job it seems to be doing. So let's uh, let the pressure off slowly and you'll watch that gauge drop. Don't want to do that too fast. Just let it off slowly. Okay, done. So I have a quick connect fitting here. I should just is it a push and a pull? And that's now disconnected. Okay. And here's the lid. Take that off of there. I'll show you more about that in a moment. Okay. What's this in here? Well, this is a mason jar. It's a big mason jar. And I, I think you've seen I've cut off the upper threaded portion for it. It happens to be, without that upper area, a perfect fit for the inside of the asparagus pot. Okay, and the asparagus pot itself, I'll just show that to you, it's a regular asparagus pot. Now you might have a home store near you that sells this kind of a thing. It's a pretty heavy gauge pot and it's designed specifically for steaming asparagus, which is why it's got that weird shape. So, um, believe it or not, I haven't done anything to seal up the rivets for the handles um, and uh, the the lid I put together well, we'll take a look at that so this lid I put together um, with the seal that's under here and I'll tell you what that is in a moment is uh, all I need to ensure a good fit and nothing leaks so let's take a closer look at this lid alright turners here's that lid and uh, I guess what I want to show you about it is it's really just, well, three-quarter inch sheet of uh, Lexan. And um, you might notice I've had to put a couple of holes in the bottom of it, okay? And these are threaded. They're drilled and threaded. And I used, um, oh gosh, I want to say it's a quarter-inch national pipe thread tap to thread these. It's not easy to find. You won't really find it at you know a big box store unless you're lucky and have a good big box store. My local ones don't normally carry that. I had to go to a plumbing specialty shop, um, and you can find those there. So uh, so those were drilled and tapped. This piece down here is a piece of uh, the sheet material that you use as underlayment for showers. So I had some left over, and uh, I use it as gasket material. Um, and what I did to uh, get this uh, sealed to the bottom was I took some 
a silicone sealer and put a, a good healthy ring of it on top of the, the you know the other side of uh, this ring that I cut out and um, I adhered it uh, where I wanted it you know kind of centered it up on the square here and uh, then I set it on top of that asparagus steamer pot so that with a you know a little bit of weight on it so it would take I don't know if you can see it here but there's a bit of an indent okay and that was I set some weight on top of it to hold it down in place on top of the you know the asparagus deal so that uh, it would um, create a national uh, natural indentation so that I always know how to center it up um, and you know account for any maybe imperfections on the bottom of this uh, uh, on the top edge of the asparagus pot so um, so that's that's what that's all about now these fittings uh, I purchased from the same person who sells cactus juice okay so this um, this is a product that you use for stabilizing wood um, stabilizing meaning that if you have say I've got this piece it's in a bag so not easy to see but this is a soft punky piece of uh, wood you can see that there's some interesting can you see that some interesting grain in there this is too soft to turn it's almost like cork um, and what I'm going to need to do is uh, get this uh, stabilized, meaning that um, in the process of using this vacuum chamber and this uh, uh, cactus juice product, it's going to, the vacuum is going to pull this into the wood, and then once we heat treat it, it's going to solidify in the wood and give us a stable, turnable uh, product. So, that's the ultimate purpose of, you know, why why did I build a vacuum chamber? Well, I want to stabilize some wood for some wood turning projects. Well, turns this um, cactus juice product is sold by a company called Turntex. You can find them at www.turntex.com. That's uh, T-U-R-N-T-E-X. And uh, I'll put it down in the link below. And, um, the owner is uh, Curtis Seebeck. Well, his company uh, sold me the parts for uh, you know the top of the lid they sell all kinds of parts so you can construct your own vacuum chamber but they also sell completed vacuum chambers so if you're interested in doing any wood stabilizing you may want to go check out his website um, and see what he has to offer now I understand that there are also some vacuum chambers that you can buy online uh, they seem to be more oriented toward like science projects and some of you even say explicitly that they're not to be used for wood stabilizing. I don't know why, um, but I wasn't going to take a chance on you know, whether or not they, they actually work. Maybe they do, um, but I figured for a little less money I could probably build one on my own. And so I want to say that altogether I probably have about $130 or $140 into this for something that is a very sound and capable system. Uh, the plexiglass, or Lexan, um, rather, I purchased online, and I think that sheet cost me $8. Um, the asparagus pot, believe it or not, came from our home store called Bed Bath & Beyond, and I want to say I got this on sale for like $25. Um, the pump I think I picked up for eighty dollars and then the balance were in the fittings and oh, also this uh, quick connect hose that I got from Curtis so uh, affordable it all comes together fairly economically um, and so like I said in the next couple of videos um, uh, or at least maybe one I'm gonna do uh, some stabilizing probably this piece and um, and some other you know soft punky wood that I've got that I'd like to turn so one of the questions you might have been asking is why the mason jar? What's this all about? Well um, the you can use anything that will fit inside your uh, vacuum chamber to actually hold the wood that you're going to stabilize and also the, uh, the cactus juice um, what you or at least what I'm trying to do is not uh, pour the juice directly into the pot, but
but to use uh, glass. When you're done with the uh, uh, vacuum process of the stabilizing, the remnant of the cactus juice, you can save that and use it for another session of uh, stabilizing. So in order to keep the pot clean, um, I decided to use a mason jar. I also have another, uh, and it, I don't know that it has to be glass, but um, my thought is that the glass is probably uh, least reactive to whatever's in that cactus juice. So uh, anyway, that's why the mason jar. And um, again, uh, I've had this uh, in the chamber under pressure. You don't have to worry about anything happening to, I mean, if it's a good quality glass jar and there are no air bubbles in it uh, that are significant, um, it is likely not going to hurt. Um, I don't think they're going to fracture or uh, explode or anything like that. Um, I've seen some videos out here that folks are actually trying these uh, mason jars out as vacuum chambers of themselves and not just you know the receptacles to go in a vacuum chamber but they're actually putting these under pressure um, so some have had success and some have seen them implode uh, so anyway uh, I am really pleased and just amazingly kind of surprised by uh, how this came together so all right Turner so just to show you how quickly this kind of sets up, I'm going to go ahead and put the mason jar into the pot. And again, I'm going to set this on here and align that natural groove that got impressed into my seal to align. Okay, so that's aligned. Now, again, this is a this is a quick connect fitting, so you can disconnect that or connect it or whatever and um, in this case you kind of push on it and put it on there and let it go okay now it doesn't seem like it's very tight but once you put it under vacuum this thing just really tightens up really well now over here we have that um, relief valve you want to make sure you close that oh, I turned turned too much let's get things recentered but turn that okay make sure that's seated properly there we go and you know make sure you have your vacuum pump set up properly make sure it has the right amount of oil in it um, and uh, if you guys do see some mist coming out of this it's the uh, oil mist being diffused out of it not a big deal maybe you want to make sure you have good ventilation when you're doing it I've seen some guys I'm gonna give it a shot too is um, put a like a coffee filter uh, over this area where the the mist is coming out and use a little rubber band and that way the coffee filter catches the oil droplets and still allows the air to pass through but okay so everything now is ostensibly ready to go now if I would put something in here um, then when we pulled the vacuum it would be going through that uh, st first step in the stabilizing process let's go ahead and it's a little noisy I'm gonna turn it on uh, and let it run so you can see how quickly it pulls down that vacuum Alright guys, I'm going to stop there for now. Um, I could let it run longer. It's at 28 and a half on the gauge. So, um, so far in my uh, limited experimentation with it, um, I have let this sit for, gosh, 30, 45 minutes. 
um, and, uh, with this much drawdown on it, and um, the needle hasn't moved. Now I understand that, you know, uh, and that's with a dry seal. If I used maybe a little bit of Vaseline on that seal uh, between, uh, you know, the seal and the pot, um, that will really, I guess, only help that seal. Uh, so uh, if, you know, that ever happens in time, then I'll probably, you know, use a, just, a, just a touch of Vaseline on there. So there it is, um, my cheap vacuum chamber. Thanks for joining me again, Turners, for my little vacuum chamber project. Uh, I know it wasn't wood turning today, so I hope you'll forgive me for that. Um, anyway, I uh, hope you found this interesting. Uh, again, I know it wasn't showing you how to build it, but essentially, um, you know, the components that I used to put mine together. So hopefully I'll find some more time here in the near future to get back out in the shop and actually stabilize that wood. Um, and show you the rest of the process as well. So that cactus juice product um, also requires a heat treat, um, which we'll do with um, just a regular toaster oven. So um, uh, again, that'll be the topic of my next video. So uh, thanks again. Uh, if you like the video, remember to like, subscribe, comment, share. Uh, please check out my channel and uh, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any new videos. Um, also check out all the other awesome wood turners and woodworkers that I subscribe to out there. So uh, we'll see you for the next one.